So as you guys know, I'm unfortunately not one of the bigger YouTubers on this platform. So no, I didn't get a Switch early. I had to wait like everybody else. But uh, here we are. I have a lot of thoughts on this thing now that I finally have it in my hands, like myself. Um, and I have some comments from you guys too, since you guys asked for some questions. And I want to make sure that you have the right information to know as to whether or not this is the best pick for you. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's get started. This video is sponsored by Datacamp. Datacamp is an online platform that allows anybody to learn data skills in easy to understand courses that even a normie like me can understand. Best part is you can go at your own pace and there's courses for all kinds of data skills from Python to machine learning and so much more. They even have a mobile app so you can learn when you're out and about. Uh, right now I'm actually taking intro to machine learning and it's been really, really easy to follow along, especially when I'm on campus. There's over 350 courses on pretty much any data program that you can think of. And there's even a creator hub that helps you take what you learn and help you get ready to find a job in data management. Invest in yourself and sign up using the link in my description to check out the first chapter of any course absolutely free. And after that, plans start at just $25 a month. Check the link in my description to try it out today or just scan the QR code on the screen. And thanks again to Datacamp for supporting the channel. Now, don't get me wrong. I love my original Switch. I'm going to be honest, this channel probably would not exist without this thing. But I'd be lying if I didn't say that it's already starting to show its age. Right out of the gate, I want to be super duper clear. This is absolutely 100% the best Switch to buy right now if you don't already have a Switch. For 50 bucks more, you're basically getting a brand new screen, 64 gigs of storage, and an amazing kickstand. And for me, that's that's good enough already. Like that, That's good enough for me to already say, all right, you should definitely get this one instead. Now, if you already have a Switch, all right, well, we're going to have to talk about that. First off, the build quality is what really stood out to me the most. The plastic is still plastic, but the button placements feel way better. And latching on the Joy-Cons feels a lot tighter now. And the screen is actually made out of glass now as opposed to plastic. There's no more gap in between the screen either, like the old Switch. And the fan vents up here have actually been restructured since I know a couple of people that have had these parts like crack for some reason due to the heat. I will say this though, Nintendo, you, you gotta work on your data management, man. Like, seriously. Okay, in case you decide to pick up one of these things, this is just for people who uh play animal crossing that's it so when you boot this up for the first time it's gonna ask you if you want to transfer over your save data from your old switch over to your new switch the thing is it'll transfer everything except for your animal crossing save you got to download a separate tool transfer it over using that and then your island is going to be safe nintendo why <laughs> why would you do it this way just just get with cloud saves already everybody else in the world has already managed to figure this out how have you not figured this out already so after all that's set up i mean yeah let's talk about the screen I'm not gonna lie. Uh, there's not really any way around it. It, it looks good. Uh, everything is super punchy and bright. Uh, the screen is already stretched out all the way to the edges now, which makes it feel really, really immersive when you're playing. And it's just the tiniest bit brighter than the old Switch. I'll be honest, the last few days, all I've been doing is just going through all my old Switch games and stuff and just like playing all the games that I had before and all over again, because I'll be honest, every time I pop in a new game, it feels like a brand new game. And again, because the screen is made out of glass now, that means it's going to be a lot less susceptible to scratches than the old Switch. I mean, the old Switch was literally, you could literally scratch it with your fingernail and it would just be, oh, permanent scratch. Now, don't get me wrong. I personally wouldn't take any chances and I got a screen protector on this thing as soon as they were available. I'll leave the one that I used in the description and I would highly suggest you get one too if you pick up one of these. I asked my viewers what you guys wanted to see me running on this thing and by far Breath of the Wild was the one that was requested the most. So enjoy the gameplay. Now the screen is still 720p and I remember back in the day on the old switch, people would like say about the, people would say about the screen, it's like, oh, okay, it's not that really big a deal because 720p on a size like this is it's completely fine. On the new screen though, it's starting to become a little bit more noticeable just because 720p is blown up to a bigger size now, albeit just a little bit bigger. I don't know why every other YouTuber right now is saying that, oh, I can't tell at all, this and that. You can tell. It's, it's not super noticeable, but like just a little bit more shimmering on some of the edges and like just, uh, just uh, you can see a little bit more pixels if you look closely, but that's that's really it. Now, are most people gonna care? I'd say 90% of people probably not. It's one thing to be able to notice it, and it's one thing to be able to be like, do you care? Me, I personally don't care. But maybe you're one of those 10% of the people that do care about stuff like that. Now, a fan on Instagram told me to try out Tetris Effect because it's been known for having a lot of the screen in the dark. And yeah, I mean, it, it's not even a competition. This looks amazing on the OLED compared to the old Switch. Um, I also picked up Metroid Dread. And the moment I picked it up, I was like, okay, yeah, these guys know what they're doing. 
There's also color options that are hidden in the menu now, and you can switch in between vivid and standard mode. In my personal opinion, vivid feels like the vivid op option on your TV that makes everything look super saturated and vibrant and colorful and punchy and contrasty. Some people like that look. I don't know if some people hate that look. Me personally, I like it. I like it, but I could see why some people might not want to keep that on. Oh my God. <laughs> no way. What? Okay, this is, okay, 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 so this is actually crazy. As I was filming this, as I was filming this, like right now, uh, somebody already managed to jailbreak the OLED switch. I'll, I'll see if I can put it up on the screen here, but dude, that's insane. I don't, I, listen, I bought both the colors because I just wanted to see what they both look like. I was planning on selling this one to one of my friends, but honestly, I think I might just keep one of these just to jailbreak it, honestly. That, that is so dope. Wow, it's been four days. Okay, I'm gonna be 100% doing a video on this. So if you're not subscribed already, now will be a really good time to stay subscribed. Wow, okay. And here I wonder why Nintendo doesn't wanna work with me. <laughs> it's a mystery, okay. Now, something a lot more drastic here is the kickstand. Like this thing feels good. Like it is rigid, it is sturdy, and I would definitely trust this thing to not fall on me if I were like out and about. Now, I'm sure there's somebody out there that thought the same thing I did. I was like, can you maybe transfer over the new back plate to the old switch and like just transfer it over? And the, the, the answer, unfortunately, is no, because for whatever reason, the new switch is actually just the tiniest bit wider than the old switch. Uh, I mean, like literally just a mark, like it's three millimeters. It's literally three millimeters wider. In fact, because of this, a lot of old accessory for the old Nintendo switch aren't going to work on this new one, which is kind of a bummer. Oh yeah, I forgot about the dock. <laughs> um, it looks really nice. It stylus wise, it's it's very sleek. It's very pretty. Um, both the black and the white one. They took away they took away one of the USB ports, but in exchange, we finally have an Ethernet port. Although I have been seeing from other creators that like it's not really the fastest for whatever reason. Um, people aren't getting the speed that they should be getting off of it. I guess it's just for stability. I don't know. I wanted to check and see if this dock would actually work with the old switch and it does. So the new switch works with the old dock and the old switch works with the new dock. Everything is cross compatible, thankfully. I'm actually curious how many people are actually going to end up picking this up when it's available separately. Uh, let me know in the comments if you're actually planning on getting one of these because I'm, I'm kind of curious. All right, now that we got through all the stuff that's different, let's talk about some of the things that have stayed exactly the same. So you're going to put this old switch in your new dock, you're going to plug it in, and it's going to look exactly the same as your old switch. Um, if you're a TV guy, don't buy this. As a matter of fact, just skip this entire. Let me get the new dock. Maybe get the new dock, but don't don't buy this. It's, it's exactly the same. As for this revision, oh, this one's, as for this revision of the switch, um, I was actually pretty curious about the Joy-Cons here because I was hoping with a new revision, they might have done something differently with the assembly and maybe address the drift issues. So just for giggles, I went out of my way to take apart the entire thing just to see if there was any new changes in the design or the way that they build them. And it's exactly the same. It's, it's exactly the same. Thank, thank you, Nintendo. Thank you very much. Now this kind of brings me to my next point, which is the power on this thing. Um, I'm fully aware that there's absolutely zero difference between these two in terms of power. This feels like a really weird compromise to me because like, look, the screen, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's fantastic. If I'm honest, it kind of made me wonder like what a high frame rate display would look like on a Nintendo Switch, but I know Nintendo would never ever do that. Um, but it's not going to save a game like The Witcher 3 that's running at like 480p, sub 30 FPS. Um, I, real I realize now that when people were complaining about the horsepower in this thing, people weren't really asking for like 1440p at 60 frames, this and that. They just wanted a steady 30. And I'm starting to realize that now. It's not a matter of high resolution this and high frame rate that. They just want to be able to play the current game that they have at a steady frame rate. As for the speakers, the new enhanced audio, I mean, it was the tiniest bit louder. That's kind of cool, I guess. Um, I'm actually curious what's inside this thing. To, like, I actually want to take it apart and see what's in, in here because uh, the old Switch, believe it or not, actually just reused the speakers from the, uh, from the 3DS. I, that's, I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious. You can Google it. it they use the exact same speakers as the 3DS. Now, personally, I don't feel right addressing OLED burn-in right now. Um, for those of you who don't know, while OLED screens are technically brighter, they tend to have issues with burn-in over time, especially when the things on the screen are shown for super long periods of time, especially stuff like UI elements and all that stuff. Uh, I'm not addressing it personally because I feel like it's way, way, way too early to start talking about that because the thing's only been out for like less than a week. Maybe I can revisit it six months from now and see how it holds up. If you're interested in a video like that, I mean, hey, let me know. I might, I might do it, you know?
so to summarize, if you like playing handheld a lot, um, although I haven't seen many people play handheld anymore, not since COVID, especially on campus, like not a lot of people carry their switches around anymore. Maybe it's just me. Um, but if you do, I mean, yeah, this get this thing. It's it's really pretty. It's really wonderful. If you're a Switch Lite owner, yeah, I agree. Same thing. It's it's a very very big leap from the Switch Lite to this. Uh, if you're a TV player, um, just buy the dock and be happy that Nintendo even gave you that. <laughs> I would like to offer one more alternative though. Um, I know the demographics might not be the same here, but I just want to throw it out there in case you're interested in the option. Um, I'd like to suggest that if you're able to get a hold of one, I mean, assuming you're able to, for just fifty dollars more. You can get yourself a really nice digital PS5 and okay. Yeah, it won't give you like Super Mario and Pokemon and stuff like that, but you will get 4K60 and you will get Spider-Man. And I, I, don't know, I do be loving me some Spider-Man, you know? <laughs> okay, those are my thoughts on the OLED Switch. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, I definitely have some big plans for these two bad boys right here. So, you know, it's going to be really interesting. Write me something nice in the comments and uh, I'll see you guys next time.